Today, I'm going to be doing the front servo upgrade. Went ahead and I ordered a 3D printed front servo mount from Ampro Engineering. Also got a 3D printed steering arm to replace the original. This one is 3D printed out of aluminum. So that is actually pretty cool. And uh, I guess let's go ahead and have a look at how much travel the steering has now. Got the truck turned on. You got the long linkage that goes all the way back with the bell crank. And this is all the steering you get. That is literally all you get. It takes forever to turn. Uh, if you're moving, it will actually steer more than that. But this is sitting still. That is full travel. That is ridiculous. If you're moving, it will eventually crank itself around. But, yeah. Had a few incidents already with not being able to turn. This is the... <laughs> pretty much the fatal flaw with this truck is it's horrible steering look at this that's not even engaging the steering servo you can hear it when I go this far but right here all slot so we're gonna take the body off all right this guy will replace this front cross member right here so I have to get all this pulled apart and a few of the bolts here loosened so I can slip this in but I need to run to Ace Hardware and find some bolts to put in the holes alright well I've done a couple things first off I painted the Ampro servo mount flat black so it doesn't look as bizarre then I went to Hobby Town and picked up some steering turnbuckles. I got a servo saver, which I'm hoping will even fit. I don't know if it will. It's kind of huge. And I got a servo extension, even though I don't know what they were thinking. That's pretty spindly, so I might just end up just clipping this wire and splicing some more into it. I don't want to do that if I don't have to. We'll see how that works, but that's not looking so good so I've got the bumper pulled off I need to pull all the rest of the bolts out get this piece out of the way alright now that I finally decided to get the tripod out I have this out of the frame obviously very oily from the shocks leaking it just slips right in there's gonna be these uh, plastic shims in here to uh, take up the space for the hangers one just fell on the floor, but I don't care. I don't need them anymore. So, the Ampro bracket. I need to remove the screws that I uh, shoved into there. I'm hoping they're going to be long enough. If not, I'm just going to have to use the stock ones. Which they might just thread in there. I, I know the guy said to tap it to M3, but I don't have an M3 bottoming tap. And uh, I don't feel like ordering one. So if it breaks, it breaks. I'll just uh, I'll just blame him. Like, hey, your uh, your part broke. There we go. That's the ticket, right? Wow, that <laughs> fit in very nicely, actually. And the holes seem to line right up. And then these slots that are in the Ampro bracket encapsulate this bracket right here for the. Leaf spring just slots up in there. Well, that went in nice. I'm thinking I'm going to need to pull the front wheels though so I can access the hardware without uh, interference on the Allen key. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Now that I have the wheels out of the way, it's a little more accessible to get in here to work. And now I'm curious to see how deep these holes are. So I'm going to use this pick as a pretty much a depth guide here. See how. Oh my gosh, look at the purchase on that. I got a screw in there that far. This thing's never coming apart. Yeah, they're all like that. Not to mention this is going to work as a centering punch. Get my holes lined up. I don't know what all this powder is coming out of the holes, though. I'm hoping this thing's not already starting to like break down. Um, 
Because that would be extremely unfortunate right now. That would suck. Um, I'm going to try to use the original hardware, actually. I had some silver screws that I just kind of found with star heads on there. Or uh, Torx. But I don't think they're going to be long enough. So I'm going to try to use the original hardware and just hope it threads itself through. I've seen a lot of people complaining about these rod ends and I haven't had one fail on me yet but I don't know maybe that was a earlier production that had bad rod ends because these are kind of a pain to get off uh, they kind of take a lot of effort actually uh, when I first got this it had trouble shifting it would only go into two wheel high and four wheel low it wouldn't go into two wheel low uh, it would miss. It was. It wasn't timed properly. So, <clears throat> golly. So I had to figure out how to get the transmission timed in, which obviously, um, I'll make a video on that. Actually, um, what I had to do was actually compress the spring on the servo saver, and then I actually unscrewed the servo saver, popped it off, and then found each gear on the shaft where they were and where they were completely connecting and then I set the remote to two wheel low which was middle position which would be where the servo is going to be at rest and then I selected the middle gear and then popped the servo saver on and it's been working perfectly ever since so I know I'm going to need to move these wires, point them up, or point them down, which, whichever. Um, I'm going to finish getting these screws in here, and then uh, we'll try to get the servo in. Alright, now that that is completely secured, I'm going to use my butane soldering iron. So I'll hold over here because the startup is quite obnoxious, especially on camera. So anybody who was... Wearing headphones, I apologize for that. There's one. Let's get a little bit of fresh solder on this one. The constant heating and cooling of solder will make it not work very well. Good in the mix there. Damn, those are really nice solder joints, actually. Okay, I'm going to try another tool kit. Oh wow, that's actually magnetic. Neat. Uh, this was one of the last Christmas presents my grandpa gave me before he passed away, um, October of last year. This is actually coming in handy. I've had this in the toolbox upstairs and uh, it hasn't been getting used much. I'm thinking it's going to have to be on the bench now because I like that. That worked really well. Alright, I have been dying to see what this feels like. Oh man, that is what she said, isn't it? Okay. Man, that is that is nice, actually. I need to watch some videos on how you 3D print with aluminum. I bet it's pretty neat. Hmm. Impressive. Uh, actually, I acquired another one of these a couple weeks ago when my grandma passed away and everybody started clearing out her house my grandpa actually had another one of these still in the package so I'm gonna put it away and give it to my son when he's older so I guess he could take his toys apart and do everything I did when I was a kid he seems quite fascinated in tools well I got the bell crank out 
Just need to try to disengage it. I guess I could just unthread it instead of trying to fight this ball joint, but we'll go ahead and give it a shot. Let's see if we can get it out. It's gonna have to come out of there. There it is. There's the bell crank, and it does have a bushing in there, even though it's pretty much useless. It's very loose, which gives you a ton of steering play just from the wobbling. Oh boy. All right, well that's junk. Now this armature's on. I think I can go ahead and get it back into position. The guy at Hobby Town just kind of eyeballed these. I'm hoping that they fit. Because it's, uh, it's kind of a long drive out there. Used to have one locally, but they just closed down like overnight. Like, what what's going on here? Um, well, that does seem like that might be a shade long, doesn't it? It's supposed to be adjustable. Well, it took some doing and a couple trips to the hardware store, but I think I finally have this installed to a point where it's not going to bind or interfere with this uh, skid plate. It might hit a little bit at like max travel. Actually, no, no, I don't think it is. There's still a little air gap in between. So, whew, that was uh, that was a lot to take apart. So let me get this thing thrown back together and uh, let's see how well it steers now. It uh, definitely couldn't be any worse than it was. All right, guys, I basically have the truck all put back together minus the bumper. I haven't uh, found any hardware to put that on yet. But uh, let's see how the steering works. Oh. Uh, normally, whenever I would drive it around a cul-de-sac, it would pretty much hug the curb all the way around because it just it would not turn. Uh, now I'm going to have to be careful because I think I'm going to be able to roll this truck on command. So that is a neat setup. Check out Ampro Engineering's YouTube channel and also check out his Shapeways account because that is where I got this mount. It wasn't cheap because uh, the mount and you have to buy the arm that goes with it. Uh, that was about 71 bucks. Ouch! Well, I did also pay up for faster production. I think it was like an extra 11 bucks uh, because I didn't want to get it in late December. <laughs> All right, I'm officially going to get the truck completely put together now. I'm going to get all the little screws and stuff put away, and we're going to have a look at the truck in its final running configuration, minus its new interior, which is on the way. Well, there she is. Functioning steering and all. That will work a lot better than where we were before. Here's a clip of before. And after. There we go. Yeah. Much better. The front of the truck. Got my headlights I put in there. I had some extra warm white LEDs. There's the KC grills I put on there. And I also bought these to try them out. They're metal windshield wipers that have rubber blades on them. They're actually spring loaded. The uh, downside to these is you actually do have to assemble them, uh, which is a little fiddly, but uh, they're kind of cool. They're kind of fun to play with. I find myself just doing this a lot, and uh, that's okay. Let me know if you guys think I should leave the brush bumper off. I mean, this thing has saved my butt a couple times, um, but uh, I just don't know how well this is going to thread into a 3D printed part and stay there. Uh, with the brush guard, without the brush guard. Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, that's it for now. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.